Hello, I am Professor Oaks. I'm the director of the EPEX program. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on what time it is when you're watching us. We're really excited about this semester in EPEX, and, and we've been kind of overwhelmed with, with some of the things. And one of the things we've been overwhelmed with was, was how many students that we've had. If, if you're a new student in the fall, you remember the classroom trying to fit everybody in, uh, me bribing people with cookies to go to the other lecture. What we've decided to do this semester is to put stuff online and, and not to use the traditional classroom as much. And this is the first um, of, of those types of an attempts. Uh, this year has shattered all kinds of records for us, for students um, in EPICS, and we're so excited about the way things are going. Um, we're growing in numbers, at both at Purdue and also other institutions. We've got about 35 other schools around the world um, that have EPICS. We have high schools and middle schools all across the United States. And one of the exciting things that happened this fall is we signed a memorandum of understanding with IEEE and MOU. Uh, IEEE is the Electrical and Computer um, Society. It's the largest professional society in the world, and they're really excited about working with EPICS. So we're excited about those. So a lot of exciting things. Um, as, as we grow, we're, we need to find new ways of, of doing things. So this first lecture or, or unit is comprised of three different videos. Uh, you're watching the first one. Um, and and I, I, hopefully you're, you're enjoying it so far. Um, these are going to meet the, the lecture requirements. Uh, that, that we have, or, or these types of things. And in, in this first block, we're going to go over um, kind of the, the overview of, of what we're going to do this semester, how we're going to do the lecture requirements, and some other details. Then there are two other blocks. One of them is about making that first week count. What, what should happen in that first um, meeting? And then the, the final one is a semester overview, just, just a quick overview of, of some of the things that, that we've changed. One of the things that, that is uh, a little different is our leadership team. We added a, a brand new lab manager, um, Andrew Pierce. If you are around, last year was our lab manager. He's the academic administrator coordinating the, the academic activities. You're going to see his face on some of these video clips later in the semester. Uh, Pam Brown is the, really the go-to person um, for most of the, the student questions. Jorge Martinez is brand new to us. We're really excited about the opportunity to, to add him to our team. He comes with a wealth of industry experience, and you will see him as our lab manager. Anna Rainwater is the secretary, the, the front, uh, the, the face of the program. And then we have uh, two of our, our staff who are, were really blessed to have Nuseba and, and Tim, who are continuing lectures, who are covering about uh, 10, 12 teams between them. Our lecture requirement. So, so let me go over the, the, um, the lecture requirement we have. It is part of the EPICS class. So when we design the class, there's the lab part we're doing the projects, and there's what's classified as lecture. And it's called a lecture requirement just because the university has lab classes and they have lecture classes, and so that's the way we're classified. Now, why do we have that? There is a theory out there that we have it because every class you got to torture students with some type of lecture, and we just have to do that. That's not the case. We do that because all of the learning doesn't just organically happen over in the labs. There's a lot of the learning, and the key of the learning in EPICS is in the lab work. But there are also things that, that are beyond that. And if you look at, um, there are times that you're going to need skills for the, the projects. Um, developing you professionally and personally. Um, what do you need to grow yourself? What, what do you need to, to grow in, into the team role? And there's also, we do these to create a common understanding and capabilities across the program. It's the reason we have a set design process, we set a common language and, and some of the tools. Those are the reasons that, that we do that. Um, and I should say, in, in the professional development, when I think of our lecture requirement, I think of it as the requirements that I have to do as a professional engineer. And um, I, I have to do a certain number of professional development 
uh, hours. Our, our requirements, as a reminder, if you're taking EPICS for one credit, you need five hours or units. And if you're taking it for two credits, you need 10 hours. Um, a reminder that this is not the only difference between the one and two credits. That, that two credits implies more project work, and that, that should be more of it. But because you're engaged um, in doing more work, that we think you have the capability of developing more hours. Now, I mentioned when I think of the lecture requirements of professional development hours. So as a professional engineer, I have to take and, and participate in a certain number of professional development hours uh, for every year to keep my license. And many other disciplines do, from, from education or uh, the medical fields. So think of the lecture units like professional development hours. What would benefit me or what would benefit my project? And what we're going to try to do with these online modules is to provide more choices for you. And if you, your first semester was last semester, you had uh, five required intro lectures. And those units were, were to, to introduce you to our design process and to create that common understanding. Now you have more flexibility um, the way you meet those. So we're not having traditional lectures in the sense that at 4.30, or if you notice your schedule, there's a 7.30 option um, for those. New students are, are going to the, the first five. We will have skill sessions and workshops during those times, and they're going to be on my epics. Now, depending on when you're watching this, they may be on my epics or they may not that, that we're, we're scheduling those. But definitely within the first week of the semester, they will be on there. There is a leadership series that we'll do later in the semester, and that's in partnership with General Motors. Space for that is limited. Um, but if you're interested in leadership, uh, that, that's a way to get five of the um, four or five the mo modules. There'll be other online modules that, that you can do for the lecture credits. They're all going to be on my epics. And just like you're going to do for, for this lecture series, uh, these, these three smaller videos count as one lecture unit. And you will uh, fill that out on my epics for credit. The other option is you're always able to propose new things. And these are advisor approved activities. They can be anything that, again, you think impacts you personally or can benefit the project. You need your advisor to agree. That can include additional activities that you do for the, uh, with your project partner. Doing activities to learn about your partner or, or to get more time with them is, is a great way for you to learn. A caveat with this is this doesn't count if you meet with your project partner during lab. The way I tend to think of advisor approved activities or for lecture requirements are these things that are going to show up in your, in your accomplishments. Here's things I did this week. If, if those are things that you're going to do as part of the regular lab work, it's not going to count for this. But if it's something in addition, for example, one of my teams was working with a community center. The students would go over and they would volunteer with the kids on a Wednesday afternoon and they'd do some tutoring and, and they'd do some, some playing around with the, the students. That gave them a much un, better understanding of, of the environment that we were working on, what, um, what are some of the requirements, that the, the, the needs of that community center, and it provided value to the community center. So those things were, were uh, very appropriate. I mentioned the credit hours, and this is just a reminder that a one credit hour student is expected to spend about three and a half hours on the project outside of lab. Um, for the, the weeks where you don't attend lectures. So when you think about it, if I'm a one credit student and I'm doing one of these lecture activities, I might be spending two and a half hours. A two credit student each week should be spending about four hours or five hours, sorry, um, outside of lab. And so if I've got one and two credit students working together, a two credit student is probably going to meet twice, or, or I, I'm going to meet with the one credit students and then I'm going to do something um, extra for that. So I mention that because uh, uh, many of you might be thinking, oh, I could take this for two credits. Um, in, in my doing that kind of work, you really want to be registered for the, the course 
that's going to uh, reward you for, for the work that you're doing. Also a note for, for those of you taking us for senior design, there, there are going to be some additional requirements um, and that will be given to the senior design students. Okay, so for full credit for this intro, uh, you just completed watching the, the first module. There, there are two other modules. Making a first week count, please look at that before you go to lab. That, that's got some information on how to make the lab uh, more effective and then a semester overview, uh, and those are the three. Thank you.